On the Build Show today, we're talking foundation waterproofing. Now we're coming to you from an ICF project and we're gonna be showing you specifically how to waterproof an ICF house, which is a little bit tricky, but all the methods and materials we're gonna be using are also gonna to apply to you if you're doing a poured concrete or a block foundation as well. Let's get going. On the Build Show today, we're talking foundation waterproofing, and I wanna say a big thanks to show sponsor, Polly Wall, who brought us out to this ICF foundation outside of Atlanta, Georgia. Now, I mentioned earlier that the means and the methods we're using here are specific to an ICF foundation, but really everything we're doing could work as well or just as well on a poured foundation or a block foundation as well. So stay tuned even if you're not building ICF. First off, ICF. Now this is a little bit tricky to waterproof because the outer surface here is EPS foam. This isn't like waterproofing a, uh, an above grade wall that might be plywood or a below grade wall that's typically concrete or block. We've got this EPS surface that we need to adhere to and that brings some special circumstances. Number one, we need to make sure we're not using any solvent-based products. So a solvent-based spray applied waterproofing or damp proofing you might use on a typical foundation, that's totally out here. That's not gonna work. Any solvent-based products are gonna eat into the foam and basically dissolve it. So we need to be really cautious about what materials we're gonna use. And that's why I like this system by the Polywall guys. We're gonna be using their home stretch family of waterproofing here. And everything they make is fully compatible with this EPS foam on this ICF house. Okay guys, so the heart of the system is this right here. This is a peel and stick product. It's 40 mils thick, which means it's very thick and gummy. And it comes in a roll that's three foot wide by 67 feet long. So basically 200 square feet. And that's what you're seeing behind me on this wall. Let me walk you through the steps start to finish on how this works. Number one, we're gonna start with the footer and we're gonna detail that footer. That's, that's really one of the most critical joints on any foundation, but especially on an ICF project. Now the footer on this project is gonna be a wide concrete footer. And then on top of that footer is gonna sit your ICF walls. And that cold joint between your footer and your foundation wall is a critical joint, whether you're building ICF or whether you're doing a traditional poured or block foundation. So that's the first joint we wanna treat. The first step on this process is we're gonna be using their fluid applied product, which is the Blue Barrier 2200. This is gonna come in a sausage pack and we're gonna apply that to all the details, especially that cold joint between the wall and the footer, but also any other penetrations. You know, for instance, on this project, we've got lots of sleeves ahead of time, which are a PVC pipe, and we wanna waterproof those with that Blue Barrier 2200. We're gonna run a bead around that and we're gonna tool it. And the same happens right here at that footer location where the wall comes down. We're gonna run a fat bead along there and then we're gonna use a tool that's basically just a plastic scraper that's been turned into a finger, so to speak. Scrape that down and get a nice chamfer on that corner right there. That's gonna be the start of the system. Okay, now that we've got the blue barrier on that critical joint between wall and footer, the next step is gonna be applying their primer. Now this is a secret sauce right here and this is what separates these guys from a lot of competitors. This is a water-based product and this primer is basically giving you a sticky on sticky. So this reddish primer, once this rolls on, it's water-based, it's not gonna eat into that EPS foam. The first step is gonna be rolling it on where the footer is gonna be detailed. So we're gonna roll that on the face of the footer, on the flat surface, and up about six or eight inches onto the wall as well so that we can use a 12 inch wide strip of their detail tape. This is basically the same as the big membrane here, but it's cut into a smaller strip to make it easier to use. We're gonna start that on the wall. We're gonna go up about six or eight inches, drop that down to that cold joint and do a real good job of getting a nice 90 degree corner there. Roll it onto the flat and then onto the face of the footer. This is gonna give us that first critical waterproofing on that joint. Now the next step is rolling the primer onto the main body of the wall. We had some pretty tall walls here, but this primer is relatively easy to use. It's a one step process. You're gonna dump it from a five gallon bucket right into a paint roller tray, and then a roller with an extension with one guy made it really easy to prime that wall. 
Once the primer's up, you gotta wait for it to tack up. It takes a little bit of time and that's gonna depend how long, depending on temperature and humidity outside. But for us, it only took about an, an hour or so for that primer to set up. And I would not omit this step. Now you've seen me on a lot of my job sites using a LumaFlash Plus by Polywall. That's that silver waterproofing. It's similar to this membrane, peel and stick. And some people omit the primer on lots of peel and sticks, and I say that is a bad idea. You want that primer first so that you've got a sticky surface, you peel that backing, and then we stick this membrane on, and it is not going anywhere, which means that you need a crew that's really gonna be detailed when they install this, because if you were to accidentally touch this and it wasn't in the correct orientation, you're gonna have a big bubble, it's not gonna work well. You wanna really think about how you're gonna install this. Now, on this ICF foundation, the client had a scaffold system inside the foundation and that made it really nice. We had a man stationed at the top and a guy outside on the wall. And all we had to do was get the dimension, that's the, the top to bottom dimension, add in the footer on there as well. So in this case, we had a 10 foot wall. We had about a six inch ledge and then another couple inches down. So we were cutting these into about 11 foot rolls approximately. We also made a cut station to make that a little bit easier. We'd roll that up like a blind, and then at the top of the wall, we're dropping that down. Now we haven't pulled the release paper yet. This is critical. We wanna leave that release paper on, and we also wanna keep that off the wall from touching because you'll notice that there's a uh, kind of a raw edge on here, which gives you an asphalt on asphalt contact here. So we've got good sticky when we overlap these. We're gonna overlap these by about three or four inches to make sure we've got a good overlapped seam here that's nice and waterproof. But once we do that, we're gonna start at the top of the wall and work our way down. So we're gonna pull that release paper slowly. We're gonna use our hands to wipe it down and get that initial contact. And then we're gonna to continue to pull that release paper as we work down the wall and make sure we've got good adhesion. The other thing we wanna make sure we do is J-roll this. It's critical to get a J-roller on here because then we're really gonna ensure that this is gonna stick extremely well. Now, once we're done with that process, you're gonna notice on this finished wall over here that it starts at the top of the wall, it goes all the way down, and it's covering over that detail joint that we did already. That's gonna give us a belt and suspenders approach. You wanna make sure that that critical joint at the bottom of the wall is fully sealed, and that's why we're doing it twice. And you'll also notice that we're shingling correctly, or we're overlapping that 12 inch wide strip, then gets overlaid with that next strip that's continuous from the top of the foundation all the way out to the outside of the footer. That's really best practice and you wanna do that, again, on any foundation, whether it's ICF, concrete, or block. Okay, the last step in the process is gonna be making sure we've pinned the top of this waterproofing at the top of the wall. And we're gonna do that with a commercial detail called a termination bar, or sometimes referred to as a term bar. This is basically a thin piece of aluminum that gets screwed into our contact points on the block and that's gonna basically give us a mechanical attachment at the top and really lock in that waterproofing. We're also gonna put a bead of detail sealant on that. We're gonna be using that Blue Barrier 2200 again so that any water coming from the top of the wall is gonna be diverted on top of that turn bar. And this is gonna prevent that dreaded stick and peel. We're doing everything we can to make sure once the stick's on, it stays stuck. The last thing I do wanna mention on this though is be cautious about UV. You know, this is supposed to be covered within 30 days and you can cover it with their Arroyo, which we're actually gonna get into in the next video. That's basically their, their air gap product that's gonna drain and dry this foundation. So stay tuned for that next video. But we wanna make sure that we're really cautious about how long it takes before we backfill and the UV rays on this. You don't wanna leave this exposed for six months. That's real bad for this. But if you do this process as we've talked about, you're talking about a foundation that's gonna be waterproof for the life of the building. These details you see here, this is from their parent company, Polyguard, that's been doing this waterproofing below grade for 60 plus years on commercial jobs that are maybe 60 feet below grade. So this little 10 foot deep foundation, this is no big deal. You do these details right, you've got a really watertight foundation. Guys, big thanks to our sponsors, Polywall, on today's video. We're gonna have a link uh, to a bunch of their uh, important pages on the home stretch so you can see where to buy the product, how to install it. All those details will be on that link in the description below. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. We've got new videos every Tuesday and every Friday. 
Follow us on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. Hey guys, one final thought on insulated concrete forms and waterproofing. You know, today's video is really focused on what you do below grade, but it's really important to think about your waterproofing strategy above grade as well. ICF has a cult-like following, and you don't hear a lot of downsides about ICF, but one downside is that I think it is a tricky system to waterproof, especially above grade. And if you generally read all the manufacturer's literature, they make it seem like it's naturally a waterproof product. You know, you've got a layer of insulation, you've got a big massive concrete wall, you've got another insulation. How could anything go wrong? How could water get through there? But in reality, you've got miles of cracks on these blocks as they come together. You've also got some pretty de difficult penetrations that you need to deal with, things like windows and doors coming through this uh, huge wall here. So as an afterthought, I wanted to mention that this system we use below grade, which is Polywall's home stretch, would also work incredibly well above grade as well. If this were my ICF house, I would run this product from the footer all the way up to the roof line. And then we've got a truly waterproof building. And the beauty of this system is that Polywall also has their blue barrier fluid applied system. So as you come up to a window and door, you could basically stop this at the rough opening and then you could use their fluid applied system into the rough opening, install the windows, make sure you put a wood shim down so you can get some positive drainage on those sills and then blue barrier over that, install your windows, finish that off with blue barrier and then the whole outside of the house would have this home stretch membrane and you'd have the blue barrier at the windows. All those products are fully compatible with ICF. They're not gonna eat through the foam and then you'd have a really truly waterproof house However, be cautious, this does have a UV life. This needs to be covered in 30 days, so you need to jump on your claddings not too long after you install this, or potentially add a tar paper or some other sacrificial surface that's gonna keep the UV rays off it. But if you did that, man, you would have a bomber house that would last for generations of time. Guys, thanks for joining me. I'll see you next week on The Build Show. <laughs> <laughs>